It's official. The 74th Cannes Film Festival has come to a close. The jury has spoken, awarding those prizes. And the jury president, Spike Lee, spoke a little too soon, revealing the top prize, the Palme d'Or, right at the beginning of the closing ceremony. Here's a little more of that mishap. The film that won the Palme d'Or to town. Wait, 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 The no. film that won the Palme d'Or. No. <laughs> Julia Ducorneau there, the prize winner, the French filmmaker winning for Titan, the biggest prize, the Palme d'Or, and she picked it up here in Cannes. And I wanted to thank Le jury. the jury de reconnaître avec ce prix We're having recognized through this de prize de viscéral qu'on a the deep-seated need we have for a more inclusive world. <laughs> Merci au jury. Thank you to the jury pour plus de diversité for dans nos making this call for greater diversity in our experience of the cinema merci and in our lives. I thank monstres. the jury for letting monsters in. So Lisa, this was quite a surprise, quite an unusual film. Tell us more about Titan. Well, whatever the stratospheric step beyond cranky is, this is where the protagonist, who we first meet as a young girl and later as a woman in her 20s, lives her entire life. If she's ever drawn a smiley face on anything, um, it, would, it would be unusual. She's just in a permanent bad mood. She uh, was in a car accident as a child, and the titan or titanium of the title is the plate that was inserted in her brain. Maybe she has an excuse, maybe she was always like that. We follow her as she grows up to be a, a woman who does uh, supposedly sensual dances, scantily clad on top of automobiles, which is a career I aspired to but flunked out of. Indeed. Uh, this is certainly a, um, an ex unusual film and perhaps a surprising choice for the Palme d'Or. When I went to the screening, certain people left the room because of some very violent scenes in that film. And the pompiers, the emergency services here in France, were actually called for people passing out and vomiting. Uh, people in people under the age of 16 are not able to view this film in France where it's out in cinemas. So let's take a look at a family-friendly clip of Titan. Now, Julia Ducorneau is a particularly young filmmaker at 37 years old. This is her second feature. Lisa, what sort of message do you think the jury are trying to send with this prize for her? Uh, if I'm honest, I'll say that uh, they're trying to tell us they've temporarily taken leave of their senses. It's not that I'm at a loss for words, it's that I can't say them on television. But I will assume that the jury was sincere and uh, enthusiastic in this group decision. And uh, certainly this is going to make headlines. And uh, th everyone's going to say this is only the second time the Golden Palm, the top award, has gone to a woman director. The previous time was uh, 28 years ago to Jane, Campany for the, Jane Campion for the piano and she shared that with a male director. So uh, this is sort of history making. It's just not the kind of history I particularly think uh, we, we need at this moment in time. There's lots of aggressive full frontal nudity. There's a lot of nasty things to watch, hence the physical reactions you uh, described. There's lots of murderous impulses carried out. Uh, French actor Vincent Landon, who's been acting for over 30 years, worked out for two years to get a very bulky, muscular body. That's something we haven't seen and we see a lot of it. The film is leavened by humor. I have to say at the press screening, people were chuckling. Uh, but personally, if you are in the mood for gory body horror with an underlying theme, I'd say go re-watch some of the early or even later work of David Cronenberg. Okay, well, it was a win for France and uh, a French filmmaker was also crowned Best Director. Now, that was Leo Scarrax uh, for his film Annette, starring Marion Cotillard and Adam Driver, who told us a bit more about about why he wanted to work with that director in particular. Leos, I think, is one of the greatest directors of all time. And, you know, 
uh, to work with him on this was an instant yes, you know, uh, just because I just love his films. They, his actors seem to have incredible freedom in them, and then working with him, I guess I've learned that that's true. You know, it's captured captured chaos, and he has a good way of knowing when to of balancing those two. The man has changed me. What I see in her is obvious. What she sees in me is... Now, the prizes that we might think of as the second and third prizes, the Grand Prix and the Prix du Jury, were both ties. Now, Lisa, these prizes went to A Hero and Compartment 6, in one case, and the jury prize was shared between Memoria and Ahed's Knee. What are your thoughts on the jury's reasoning there? Well, the festival rules won't allow the jury to give more than two awards to any one film, and so they've really spread the, the wealth around here, which leads me to believe that either they didn't agree or they were all incredibly enthusiastic about a wider range of films than they had prizes. You are permitted to do a tie. I don't think it's the festival's favorite thing, and as a filmmaker, it depends on who you end up sharing the award with. So, you know, it should be, is it mine, 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 or it is an honor to share it with you, Mr. Godard. Indeed, I mentioned uh, Iranian filmmaker Ashka Fahadi going home with the Grand Prix for A Hero. Let's take a look at that film. Now, Madame Orkhasi. Salawati. Al Chan Rasi. Hedor Jassa. Amash. Makol Khashin Tama. Salam. 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 And of course, another split, as I mentioned, for the jury prize between uh, an Israeli film and a Thai film by way of Colombia. Uh, tell us more about that one. Well, uh, the, the, the uh, Ahed's Knee is by Nadav Lapid, who is a, a, a very outspoken Israeli director with a huge following here in France. And Memoria is by festival favorite, a picture pong where a uh, and because his name is, is hard for some people to pronounce. He's known as Joe, quite affectionately, all over the world. And uh, his films are meditations on nature, our place in the world, time sort of stops. Uh, very, I don't know what else to say except yeah. meditative and unexpected. This one uh, has Tilda Swinton and uh, some special effects that are extremely unexpected. They are dreamlike, his films. Indeed, let's hear more from Apichapong Wirasetakun on the making of that film, Memoria. Memoria is about this vibration of memories that connect us. In this strange time, the cinema allows us to feel a sense of togetherness. We are one memory, one global body, one fear, and one dream. The dream of betterness. And if I may, I would like to send this vibration of hope to everyone here and those, to those out of this auditorium, may we help each other and be at peace. Apichat Pong, we're aesthetical, receiving his prize here in Cannes. Next to Best Actor and Best Actress, I believe you were very convinced by those performances, Lisa. Absolutely. The movies would not exist without these two actors. Uh, in the case of Caleb Landry Jones, he is playing a real life, uh, again, an extremely disgruntled protagonist, but th this one from real life. Uh, his parents in Australia and uh, Tasmania just don't know what to do with him. Very few things make him happy. He's maladjusted, and uh, he's able to purchase firearms and he's able to do something with them that has gone down quite negatively in history. Uh, so he's extraordinary. And then the uh, Norwegian actress Renata Rensiv in uh, a film whose French title translates as Julia in 12 chapters. In English it's called The Worst Person in the World. I'm not sure why, but it's a very interesting uh, film about a woman who's about to turn 30, who's had nothing but choice and opportunity in her life, things that women dreamed of for generations, and when 
when she's got the opportunity to become anything, to pursue any interest, well, she can't make up her mind. In romance, in her professional life, she's she's sort of not sure what to do with what the direction history has moved in for her to be the beneficiary. She does carry that film indeed. Now, just briefly, Lisa, there's been a very rich uh, selection of films in competition this year. 24 of them are glut. But what were your personal highlights? My personal highlights, actually, the 14th of July Bastille Day uh, fireworks are something I'm going to remember for the rest of my life. But in terms of films, I'm still a fan of uh, Paul Verhoeven's Benedetta, currently in French cinemas. It's your standard 1625 lesbian non-story during the pubonic plague. It's funny, it's pertinent, it has things to say about religion and uh, and personal ambition. And uh, I very much liked, uh, it outside of competition, uh, Oliver Stone's JFK Revisited, a very dense, interesting documentary about uh, what has been discovered as more and more files have been released in the U.S. And uh, it's interesting also that he had to get funding for that, not in the U.S., but here in Europe. Certainly strong political work. Lisa, thank you very much for that roundup. Well, that does wrap up this year's edition of the Cannes Film Festival, the 2021 Vintage. We don't know if it will be a vintage year, but it's looking good. <laughs> it's certainly looking like it's historical after the pandemic. We'll leave you with a taste of some of the ups and downs, what goes on behind the scenes here on the shoot. And we'll be back in Paris for more arts and culture on Encore here on France 24. I just spat a little bit, sorry. <laughs>